Normally this would be Teardown Tuesday, but I didn't get to it till Wednesday. So we're going to tear this new unit down, see what makes it tick. Let's check it out. I picked up a package today thinking it was somebody sending me something to, uh, to work on, but it looks like I got a new toy to try out. So let's open this up together. This is from Harry Tekis. Let's just see what uh, gadget they sent me to take a look at. It's, it's double wrapped. Gotta make sure this one here doesn't fall out of the packaging. Alrighty then, what do we have? It's called a TR-631, and this appears to be, well, it's a CD player. It appears to be a little boom box. I haven't seen one of these things in a while. I, get, I didn't even know they still made these things. I guess they do. I just never see anything. I never go into stores looking for them. But uh, Let's check this out and see. We're going to take this one apart, too. We'll see how well this thing's put together. But This is uh, a new little CD player. That supports CDR, CDRW, MP3, and USB playback. So this is the unit. It's got a little fake disc in here to protect everything, to hold everything in place while it's being shipped. So we'll just remove that. Let's power this thing up and see what it does. The unit can be powered from AC and it can also be powered from batteries. In this case it takes six C size batteries. And of course, AC power. Comes with a polarized cord. Let's turn it on and see how it sounds for the radio. So to turn it on, let's just try the source button. And that turns on the unit, it looks like. Oh, power button, how's that? Power, there we go. Starts out at 88.0. So it goes from 88.0 to 108. Crash on Highway 1 eastbound after First Avenue in the left lane. I bet you there's a way to change that. Let's just see here. Source CD. USB, Bluetooth, auxiliary in, and radio. So the unit does not have an AM radio, it's FM only, and here's our specifications. Of course it has Bluetooth capability, it also has a USB port on here. We can plug a USB stick in, where does that go? right here on the side. So you've got a headphone jack on the side, you can plug wired headphones in. It's got Bluetooth capability, USB input, and auxiliary input. We're gonna go through the features on this unit, show you what it can do. As I say, in the manual, it supports WMA, MP3, and CD operation. Frequency range 188 to 108. It'll store 30 stations. Bluetooth, USB, CD, and radio. Only FM radio, as I already mentioned. So to turn the unit on, press the power button and select your source. In this case, of the treatment starts with this. we take the stars and as soon as we I've just got this set to 88.1, which is CBC radio, just because I can get away with that. And uh, I can go to my, my test. I can't obviously leave it there. Uh, to memorize a station, you can hit memory, and then select which memory you want to store it in, press and hold, and that would be probably uh, set to memory number one. There we go. Press the presets and it'll take you through all your presets, all 30 presets, one at a time. 
I think I started this in the preset one. In the wave preset two. Started in the cold. preset two. And okay, cold. so that's uh, how you set the memory. From getting too high and Source CD. We'll try the CD player. I've got uh, some CDRs, some CDRW, and uh, we'll try both MP3 and regular uh, CD. So let's try a regular standard audio recording on a CDR. No D for no disc. Open up the disc compartment. Place a disc in. It actually snaps down in place. So there's a little series of ball bearings to hold the disc in place. Close the lid and it starts to read immediately. And it should tell me that there's 18 tracks on here. And if I press the play button, it will play in sequence. It is stereo. We have an equalizer setting. Which will change the EQ. To change the tracks, you can go one track forward or one track backwards at a time. Uh, if you need to go 10 tracks, that'll take you 10 tracks forward. So we went from 3 to 13. Uh, you got a repeat button here so you can repeat a single track, repeat all the tracks, or random should pick another track at random. So now it's going to track 16. Next track is down to number track six. And that's basically operation of a standard audio CD. If I open the disc compartment, it stops play. And then we gotta release the disc, which is the fun part because it, uh, you have to kind of dig it out of here. It doesn't eject the disc, but that's okay. It's a, a basic CD player. We're going to try a couple of CDRW discs now because this supports CDRW. First is uh, some classical music in CD format, which I don't anticipate any trouble. And then I've got one that's got MP3 discs or MP3 files it's loaded full of MP3 files. So again, there's 16 tracks on this disc and it reads it no problem. As I would expect it to because as it does say it supports CD, R, CDRW, MP3, and USB playback. So that's playing a, an audio CD off of a CDRW. No problem there. The next disc we'll put in is a, a disc of Music Bakery tracks, royalty free tracks. This has got uh, a couple hundred tracks I'm sure on here because it's full. This is recorded in MP3 format onto a CD which is one of the, my favorite ways of recording a CD was to put MP3s on because then you could put a lot of tracks on here and it should indicate that this is an MP3 folder one. It's 178 tracks on here and again same thing if I start up playing start playing track one first if I again I can select the different modes so random it'll now go to track 73 and I actually have already tried this with um, I tried a 64 gig uh, USB stick in here off camera which had uh, several thousand tracks on it and it displayed 999 but it was there was multiple folders so it actually displayed all of the tracks that I could see on the, the stick itself on the USB stick displayed on the display here now we're going to track 98 we'll see how this handles shock pick another track with a little more music So we'll shake this thing a bit. Now 
doesn't appear to be skipping. You can bounce around with that in your car. So that's pretty good. I wonder, that now that's an MP3, so obviously there's a buffer to read ahead on MP3. I'm curious, though we're going to go back to an audio CD. I'll pick a Music Bakery one just because I can play it without having to worry about getting copyright if I play more than like six seconds. So let's just try this one. It's, I'm going to shake the hell out of this one as well and see whether it will, will skip. Because I doubt the buffer is as long off of an audio CD, but... That's pretty good. Like I'm just giving it a magnitude 9 earthquake now. And it's not skipping. Oh, and now I still couldn't get it to skip. Oh, finally. <laughs> shake it violently enough and it will skip. But uh, for everyday operation, it's not going to skip. Unless you really beat the living crap out of it. Okay, so CD player works. That's good. It's always good. You got a good CD player. Because so many portable CD players were just so fragile that if you so much as breathed on them, they would skip. Also, we've got USB. So I've got a USB stick with a bunch of tracks on it. We'll just plug this thing in here like that and we'll select USB. It'll read the USB stick and there's 293 tracks on this stick and that's just because I put my music bakery content on here. Again, works the same. Should be able to select random and if you're not in random play you can jump ahead 10 tracks so there's track 103 track 113 so if you know what track you want to go to, if you want to go to track 125 there's track 125 track 200 go up to track 195 whoops there you go that's how you get to your tracks pretty quick That's a pretty good little unit. So far I've found no flaws with this unit. Next we're going to try pairing this thing to Bluetooth. So I'm going to put it into Bluetooth mode and I'm going to grab an old, an old phone. In this case it's a very old phone. It's an old Blackberry. Yeah, it doesn't work anymore except for, except for I think just um, Bluetooth. If I can remember how to work this silly thing. It's been so long since I've worked this BlackBerry. I just don't even know how to work it. Go to Bluetooth. I select Bluetooth. And I should see this showing up here as... Um, there it is. TR631. Authorization request. Yes. Oh, look. I'm successfully connected. So now I can start up my music player on the phone. And uh, I'll be able to play it. Wherever my music player went on here. I think it's right there. And what have I got on here? Shuffle. Play. So I can play from my phone and <laughs> it'll work with an old Blackberry, it'll work with anything, believe me. Next track. I should be able to control the volume from the volume buttons on the phone, if I remember where they are. There we go. I can turn it down and turn it up 
from the phone. And probably from here too. If you're wondering how the sound quality is, well, remember it does have fairly small speakers, so the sound quality is, it is what it is. It's what's to be expected from a unit of this size. It also has an auxiliary input. I'm not even going to bother with the aux cord, but you can plug an auxiliary input into it using a standard 3.5 millimeter stereo plug. It has a telescopic antenna on the back for the FM reception. And here's our input voltage. It's a universal, so it's got a switching adapter inside. 100 to 220 volts. And it's uh, Hinan Yisho Electronic Commerce Corporation out of Zhang, Zhangtao District, China. So that's where this is made, as if it's going to be made anywhere else. But you know what? Looking at this thing, I mean, it looks to be pretty solidly built. Now, we are going to take this apart. That's what we do on this channel. We're going to take this unit apart right now. And I'm going to show you guys what's inside this little boom box that uh, I was sent to evaluate. And this is one that I think that I will be keeping. And this is gonna go out onto my patio in the summer to listen to the radio and to be able to play some music off of either my phone or off, well, probably off of an MP3 CD because um, I've always liked to make my own compilation discs and put a couple hundred tracks on a single CD. And I've got lots from when I had a CD player in the car that are already recorded in MP3. The fact that it can operate off of batteries is also a bonus because, of course, if the power goes out, it's always good to have a portable radio. Uh, the only thing that's lacking, which I wish that it did have, is I wish it had AM because that's where our news and information stations are here. They're still on AM. I realize that AM radio is uh, losing its popularity, and in some countries, especially over in Europe, they're not even broadcasting on AM anymore, but here they are still using AM. And that is where we go to get news and information. So that's the only thing that uh, I find is, is missing on this is AM. But it's, it's certainly checking all the other boxes for a small compact unit. And uh, I guess once I get this thing apart, we'll see how well built it is inside. With all the screws removed, the unit should just split into two. Just like that. Actually, it splits into three. But there's the, the power supply over here. We'll unplug this cord with plug so we can look at the components separately so here's the power supply unit it's using a standard beat off the shelf power supply your mains voltage going in and it's shielded which is good it's got its own separate barrier all the way around it to keep the high voltage separate from the rest of the unit but here's our power supply our mains voltage going in and our chopper transformer and MOSFET be a bridge rectifier over in here somewhere as well where is the bridge rectifier hiding anyway there's a bridge rectifier in there somewhere it's probably on the bottom but here's our power supply and there's a switch back here if we notice there's a little switch back here so when we plug in the power it disconnects the batteries from the power supply itself one of these leads is going to go to the battery and when it's unplugged it connects the battery up to the power but when it's plugged in the battery is disconnected therefore the power supply does not attempt to charge the battery here's the CD transport and the radio itself it's a single board solution it is using a class D amplifier so it does have a fair bit of power and that's why it, the sound quality is actually not too bad and it does go fairly loud this is compared to the older generations which used like an integrated circuit uh, class AB type amplifier. The speakers are rated 8 ohms, 5 watts each. They have decent sized magnets for small speakers. As I say, the sound quality is not bad considering what it is. And I, you know, I don't know how it comes across on camera, but it's for a portable unit, this is certainly something that you could listen to and take to the beach. Um, you know, take out back when you're working out back. It's certainly something that uh, you could enjoy. Uh, the sound quality is good enough. 
cut a couple chips on here. One of these is going to be for the CD player. I think that's the servo. This is a servo I see down here. Um, you can just tell by the, the, the larger tabs part, uh, form part of the heat sink. This is going to be the servo. I'm sure this is the servo. Um, you get your digital audio chip over here for your decoding. And uh, this is more than likely the radio section over, over here. It does have our favorite surface mounted electrolytic caps on it, but again, those have not been an issue in the last several years. The problem with failing surface mounted electrolytic capacitors goes back to the early days in the 80s and into the 90s when these were a new technology and they really hadn't perfected them and they all started to leak. I don't anticipate that this vintage of capacitor is going to be a problem like it was 30 years ago. Uh, here's our output ICs here, Class D amplifiers, and their respective filters here for the left and the right channel. In this case, left, and that case, right, because we're looking at it backwards. And as I say, this is where the power plugs in right here. And our CD player. Here's our optical pickup right there. And our spindle motor and sled motor is over here. Got a door close switch over here that tells the unit when the CD is in place. So when you open the door, this switch opens and it stops spinning. For those of you wanting to see the actual CD transport, I will remove the screws and we'll remove the CD transport so that you can see the makeup of the mechanism that controls the sled. It's just going to be a standard plastic gear for sure, like they all are. Uh, it's got shock mounts, as you can see. That's these rubber mounts. It's actually got double shock mounts because there's shock mounts on the chassis as well as the mounting plate, which probably contributed to the resistance to shock when I was shaking the living hell out of it. And uh, as you saw, I really was shaking this thing up, and it was tough to make it skip. And I did manage to eventually make it skip when it was playing a CDR audio CD but I never was able to make it skip when it was playing an mp3 disc and that's just due to the fact that this thing's going to have a data buffer so there's the CD mechanism itself your standard run-of-the-mill little gear driven mechanism again I don't see anything wrong with this maybe 20 years from now the plastic will shrink and the gear will crack like happened on a lot of them but um, again it looks to be pretty standard little metal chassis here with plastic gears and of course the lens assembly there is a switch right in here that tells the mechanism when the CD is in its home position just like that just like all CD players have so pretty basic unit and um, but I, I can't find any fault with it you know, for for what this thing costs I think it's a, a pretty good little unit and I think anybody that ends up with one of these units will be fairly happy with the sound quality as to how long it's going to last that's anybody's guess but um, I think that uh, looking at the build quality from what I've seen here so far it's as good as anybody else's that I've seen and for that I think that uh, I could probably recommend one of these units. Now I have a Retecus um, little portable radio I've had for a couple years with a rechargeable battery and it plays music off of SD cards and I've been using that thing all the time. I've been using that thing for a couple years now. It's never skipped the beat. Battery is holding up really well on it so I, I have no problem uh, recommending this brand as I've got a couple units from them and I've had no issues with any of them over the last couple of years that I've had them. About the only thing I can really knock them on, and this is this is nitpicking, this is nitpicking, but um, but the only thing that I could even suggest might be an improvement would be to either replace the USB with an SD, a micro SD card, where you could actually put the card right into the unit, or have the USB socket recessed because if you've got a USB stick sticking out of it like this right you've got your USB plugged in however it goes like that 
okay, someone comes along and knocks that, they could break the connector or break the USB stick. I mean, if you've got a, one of these little stubby little USBs, you're not a problem. But if you've got one of the full-size USB sticks sticking out there, uh, that sticking out the side is just a, a, an accident waiting to happen. So maybe have this relocated to the top or, or put it in the back, put it in the battery compartment, have a hatch or something that you can put your USB stick in or replace this with a micro SD reader like the little portable radio has and you can load all your music on a micro SD card, pop it in there and forget about it. Then it's protected. That's just one little thing. I, you know, it's, um, it's not really even that serious because a lot of people probably wouldn't even bother using the USB reader on it. Most people would either pair it to their phone and play music off their phone or they'd be playing a CD player or playing CDs because really that's the reason to buy a portable CD player is if you've got CDs that you want to play. That's the reason for buying something like this. So the USB is a nice option but I think that's probably one of the features that a lot of people probably won't use much just because it does stick out the side. But it is there, it's a good option. If you use the short little, the small USB sticks that are only, I think they're only half an inch, no big deal on one like that. Other than that, I can't find anything on this to really complain about. For what it is, it sounds good. It's a small portable radio. Oh, no AM reception. That really, that's the only thing I could knock it for. Wish it had AM. But other than that, this unit here looks to be really well built. Anyway, thanks for watching. Link is in the description. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.